Hello there everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Josepha and while I got extremely lucky with Warrior of Light this past week, I didn't get so lucky in some other aspects of life. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video and today we're going to be discussing High Armor, or Lufenia Armor, or however you want to, you want to declare whatever it's called. Now, uh, this kind of armor is something that I get a lot of questions about recently and honestly there are a lot of other content creators out there that have already covered this. So if you wanted to go and have a look around at some of the other content creators I very very much encourage you to do so as there's been some fantastic coverage of high armor already. But I wanted to give you guys my own take on it, my own little rundown on exactly what high armor is and how I would recommend going about picking stuff up because the stuff that you or the tokens that you need in order to pick these high armors up is very limited. And therefore, if you want to kind of learn a little bit more about what you should pick up and why you should pick it up, then of course stay tuned and keep on watching. Of course, before we get started, a quick update on all of my social medias and everything as well as myself. You may have seen recently on my social medias, on my community page, on YouTube, etc. that I have come into a bit of an unfortunate situation due to the second lockdown that we have here in the UK. And unfortunately I have, uh, been, I'm unable to work because of this, so it means that it's a double-edged sword because it means that obviously I'm unable to earn anything for myself, but it also means that you guys are going to be stuck with me a heck of a lot more over the course of the quarantine, however long it may last. Hopefully it's only one month this time and not three. But so therefore you can see my Twitch schedule on my right hand side here and you can also check all of my social media posts on there for wanting to, if you want to come and follow me on Twitch or anything like that. My Final Fantasy count up is finally starting on Friday so I really would love it if you guys would come along to that so that I can do something that's different from Dissidia Opera Omnia, that is consistent, that I'm going to be doing every week so from now on so you guys can come and join in with this journey in a gargantuan thing of going from Final Fantasy 1 all the way up to Final Fantasy 15. So that would be great to see from you. In terms of Patreon, obviously I am hugely thankful to every single person that's become a patron over the past six months or so, or however long it's been since I started doing content creation again. God, has it really been that long already? <laughs> um, but I just wanted to ask you guys actually, like what kinds of things perhaps you might want to see from my Patreon or my channel in general, so that I can improve things as much as I physically can for all of you guys, so that I'm basically at a point where I'm becoming a full-time content creator you know, due to the situation as we being what it is. So therefore, if you guys have any ideas for anything you think that I could do to improve any of this kind of stuff, then do let me know in the comments below or send me a message on Discord, Twitter, anything like that. It would be great to hear from you. Now, I always shout out one of my patrons every time I release a video so that I can give my thanks to each and every one of you individually. And today that person is going to be N. Greeny, who, as you can see by his title card down here, is a fan of Rose from Legend of Dragoon. Now, I never got to play Legend of Dragoon because I don't remember it ever actually coming out in the UK. Do let me know if I'm wrong on that one, though. Of course, don't forget to check out all of the different websites that are are available for Opera Omnia in terms of information and of course don't forget to check out all of the other content creators out there besides myself. So first things first, let's take a look at exactly what high armor is and how one can acquire it. And as I said at the beginning of the video, there are a fair few different content creators that have already covered this. So I would encourage you to definitely check out by searching in DFFOO high armor or something similar into your, into your search bar. You'll see that content creators like Black Nero, Shao Chun, Simply Lost, Aida Channel have already covered what high armor is. But I've been getting a lot of questions about high armor, so I thought I would release my own video on top of that just so that we could cover it together. So let's take a look at exactly what high armor is and how you acquire it. Now the reason for high armor's existence is as a reward for beating Lufenia missions so that you get high armor tokens and you have to complete the Lufenia mission in order to acquire these. So that's finish the mission with the score requirement and all of the missions simultaneously. Restoring yourself with gems isn't going to work this time so you're going to need to finish it without dying. So make sure that you finish all of those missions and you will acquire 20 high armor tokens on top of whatever other rewards you get for finishing the Lufenia mission. Now going into the item exchange or the token exchange you'll be able to exchange high armor tokens for a single piece of of high armor. Now high armor does not require limit breaking at this time so therefore all you need to do is level it up. It has 210 CP which is obviously more CP than any armor that we've currently seen in the game so far and high armor also carries with it an effect and one of five different effects depending on which particular group of armors that that belongs to. 
So all of the different types of armor have something in common in that they increase the amount of bravery that you can hold and therefore the amount of HP damage that you can deal by a certain percentage depending on which keystone group the armor belongs to and it's a percentage between 5 and 15%. Now each of them has a different ability depending on which one you pick. So there's five different ones. You have the attack one, which is a which allows you to hold 15% more bravery, and it also means that any bravery damage you deal can break the 9999 damage cap by 15% as well. And notable characters that hold the attack keystone armor include Ardin, Lightning, and Vivi, and there's plenty of others as well. And this is obviously designed for damage dealers and damage dealers alone. So honestly, you are gonna want this armor as time progresses for your primary damage dealer, particularly on one that you know you're going to be using an awful lot, because more damage is good, like damage dealers dealing damage is what they're supposed to do. Then you have the Unity Keystone, which does a similar kind of thing, but it also expands that to your party to a lesser extent, and this basically it makes it so that your entire party can break the damage cap for bravery by 5%, so an extra 500 bravery damage on top of the 10,000 you already have, and it also increases increases the HP damage and held bravery by 10% for the character that's holding it. Now notable characters that can include this include Noctis, Kuja and Kurasame and this is also a really nice one to have hold of. I'll go into greater detail with some of these in a bit but this is also a great one to have hold of in combination with the attack based one because not only does it affect the character but it affects your damage dealers as well. You then have the Encouragement Keystone, which increases your Held Bravery by 10%, and it can also basically make it so that you get like any Bravery gains that the character gets are increased by 5%. Characters that can hold this one include Warrior of Light, Gladiolus, and Beatrix, and this one is not quite so desirable because honestly there's you can get that kind of effect from various different places and you know 5% is not an awful lot in comparison to some of this stuff that other high armor produces. Then you have Tactics, which is uh, a, probably my personal favorite, if you ask me. This increases your HP damage and held bravery by 10%. And there, well, when I say it increases your HP damage, it increases your hell bravery and therefore the maximum amount of HP damage that you can deal, just to clarify, as opposed to like a Charlotta type aura where it increases your actual HP damage. And this lower, this produces a debuffing aura that lowers your opponent's attack, initial bravery and max bravery by 10% and their defense by 20% which is actually a really strong effect to have on at all times with no debuffs taken up or anything like this. This is just an aura, so it's really good, especially for characters that compound this, and characters that hold this include Emperor, Kefka, Reno, basically the kind of characters you would expect to have a debuffing aura, and it actually works extremely well on them. And then lastly, you have the support-based keystone, which increases your party's attack by 5%, which doesn't seem like an awful lot, but it also increases your party's held bravery cap by 5%. So as opposed to the others, which only affects the character that's holding it for that, that shared effect that all of the armors have, this one actually does expand it to the party, but to a much, much lesser extent. And then the characters that can hold or get, or get a hold of support-based armor is going to be characters like Ramza, Barsh, and Rude. So those are your five different types of high armor. So why does everybody talk about high armor like it's a massive commodity and you have to save your high armor tokens as much as possible? Now there are multiple reasons for this. You only get to exchange one for one high armor per Lufenia mission. So on the, on the basis of the idea that you are clearing every Lufenia mission as it comes out, you are only gonna be able to exchange for one character. So basically, you should be first and foremost reserving your high armor tokens for characters you know for a fact you are going to use frequently. So basically, if you're like if you pull like eight in the next chapter and you think like for free and you think oh I might use him in a couple of Lufenias but nothing I'm not going to use him all the time like I would say Lightning or Noctis or Kuja or Kurosame or Gladio or something like that then you're gonna go then possibly hold off on using your high armor tokens on that character. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to bear in mind is actually which effects you actually want from your high armor. So for example, with Warrior of Light, Warrior of Light is a great character whether he has his high armor or not, and his high armor belongs to the Encouragement Tree, which honestly doesn't really appeal to me. Brave gain by 5%, for a support based character does not justify me picking up his high armor so I can save 
high armor tokens for the next character. Obviously, I've released this video after the first batch of high armor tokens has been released, so if you have spent them on, say, Warrior of Light or Squall already, don't panic, there are plenty of other Lufenia missions for you to earn more from. This is uh, like being released so that I can pre-warn people for the future. Um, encouragement is just okay. It, it doesn't really, it's, it's not a massive jump in skill or a jump in damage or anything like that, just for the sake of Warrior of Light being able to hold 10% more bravery than he normally would. Um, support is equally like a little bit iffy as well, like a 5% attack aura sounds quite nice, but when you compare it to the attack, the unity, or the tactics based keystones, it just doesn't do as much. Like party attack and party hell bravery up 5% is nice, but I think that you could do better. I really enjoy the unity and tactics and attack based ones, as you'll find a lot of other content creators do as well. And, you know, when it comes to spending your armor tokens, try to think about who you're using and who you're pairing them up with in order to capitalize, as I said, on these particular buffs most. So, for example, if you are bringing along, say, Kefka, Ku oh, sorry, Kurosame, Kefka, and Lightning, then you're going to be able to, like, capitalize on three different effects in different ways. Or, like, or you don't necessarily have to have three high armors in your team. Like, Gladiolus is an incredible character, so is Warrior of Light. I don't need their high armor to make them that good. Whereas somebody like Lightning or, or, or Squall when he gets his rework or anything like that, they're going to want their high armor because the whole point of their character is dealing more damage. And therefore being able to break the damage cap per hit means you're going to reach that cap of held bravery that much faster. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be a live and die by the rule thing, because quite honestly, I plan on picking up both Kurosame and Kuja's uh, high armors, despite the fact that they both belong to the Unity uh, Keystone, and I probably would like to use them both at the same time as well, just for the ability to use Ice Prison and, um, of course, Seraphic Star at the same time, when the, when the you know, if and when I manage to get hold of their LDs. And just being able to hold the extra the extra bravery is really nice. But the thing that I will say that a lot of people are warning people about when it comes to hoarding high armor tokens is that far in the future, the Japanese version of the game has now started releasing high armor realization, which expands upon this in very much the same way as we've had EX Plus and armor, armor realizations already, but the resources you need in order to cap out on the armor require you to have 60 high armor tokens, which means that's three Lufenia missions for one lot of armor. And obviously, with them being released at the same rate they are now, you may want to consider holding on to as many of these as physically possible so that you have an easier time getting hold of these high armors earlier. So with, uh, these come about in the dawn of when Golbez gets his burst, so it's something that people may want to bear in mind for the future and not just spend their high tokens straight away. As Lufinia sort of progresses, it's the like, more mechanics start to get introduced as well, like bravery damage reduction gets introduced quite heavily, uh, bravery gain reduction gets introduced quite heavily, so you could also sort of strategize your high armor token uses in such a way that you are countering the content as it becomes available. Because basically, all this is designed to do is to help you clear content. And if you're using it to do that, whether, no matter what you're particularly picking up, if it's helping you clear content, then you should be going for it. But that being said, I think in terms of like prioritizing the keystones, and there are obviously going to be different sort of variations on this, then honestly, I think your damage dealer needs to come first. Tactics may well be my favorite, of the five different keystones, but you but attack, you definitely want to have that at least somewhere in your party. Because, like I said, your aim is to kill the thing. So the thing that helps you kill the thing should probably be the thing that you go for first. <laughs> and then I really like, I do really like tactics, but the characters that it is spread out on are quite few and far between. So therefore, I think that Unity is another one that people want to concentrate on because it tends to be on more like offensive support based characters like Kuja, Kurosame, Noctis, and all of them like make great use of their, skill, of their skills, of the fact that they give that damage cap to everybody. So I think the Unity, Tactics, and Attack are the ones that you want to prioritize first, and I would only really go for support or encouragement if they're a character you know you're going to use all the time, but even then, you don't really need 
either of these. So if it's an excuse for you to be able to save your, your, your high armor tokens for another time, or even for high armor realization way down the line, then being able to save it can be a positive thing in and of itself. Now, Warrior of Light and Gladio are both characters that a lot of people, myself included, have either already acquired or are going to acquire, but you don't need their high armor. If you're gonna, like, I mean, as I saw with uh, Black Nero's video when he released his, if you're gonna go for an encouragement armor, then Gladio is a great pick for you. So you might want to consider getting it for him because it's a character you're going to use that frequently. But you realistically don't need it. And the same goes to support. Like, the 5% extra held bravery is nice, but it realistically it's only 5%. And a 5% attack aura, it's it's nothing. It, like, it's certainly in the grand scheme of things when it comes to, like, the bravery damage reduction, the brave gain reduction, all of that kind of thing. 5% is, like... The, like uh, you know, the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more you could be doing in order to increase your stats and tackle Lufenia than having that extra 5% from using high armor tokens that you could be saving for somebody else. So to finish up, I'll let you guys know what my plan is when it comes to high armor tokens and who I want to get those armor tokens for. And obviously everybody's plan is going to be different. And there's no wrong answer for these kinds of things. Just I would suggest heavily against picking up too many support or encouragement ones because you could get more out of the other three. I want to pick up Kuja and Kurosame's first, so that means that with the current one we already got from Shinryu as well as Eight's Lost Chapter, I'm not going to spend those high armor tokens at all because I want to try and hit the ground running in terms of saving for them, and then I'll pick up Kurosame's and Kuja's as time goes on because they're both characters I plan on using a lot, and they're in one of the better um, categories for keystones. Then I'm gonna want to pick up lightning as well. Like I, I don't plan on going in on Gao. I do plan on going in on Gladiolus, but I'm going to try to not use his high armor because honestly, I just don't think he needs it. And the more I can save, the better. Lightning is gonna want it because I want that brave damage cap break by 15% on the attack. It's a really, really nice thing to have. The same will go for Cloud if I manage to pick him up. And then obviously, batches of high armor are going to come out over the course of time. So when I've said, oh, I really love the tactics ones, there are characters I love that have the tactics one. So Kefka, Emperor, Ultimecia, Eldnash, Reno, Kamlinor, if I get lucky enough to get Kamlinor, all of those use the tactics version of the armor, and they're great outlets for it. Maybe not so much Kamlinor, but, <laughs> but like, I mean, characters that you plan on using a lot you should be giving the armor to, but just be sparing in doing it. Just don't go in with all of your high armor tokens thinking, oh, I want this one, I want this one, I want this one, because you will get bottlenecks later on where you really need them for, say, either just a Lufenia somewhere down the line within the next few months, or much further down the line. The more you can save now for, and I know it sounds crazy, but of like seven or eight months time when high grade armor realization comes along, you're gonna thank yourself for doing it later. And the other thing to bear in mind as well is that you don't have to spend the tokens the day a character comes out with their high armor. You can see how far you can get without needing it, and then pick it up if you find you do. And like, with the damage dealers, they're the, probably the best one you should go for first. But with the unity buff and the tactics buff or anything like that, you might find you don't even need them. So if you don't, the, basically, the be all and end all of this particular video comes down to, if you don't need the armor, don't buy it. So that's going to be all for today's video. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below as well for a Reddit post that I found that leads to a Google Sheets that has a list of who has which armor over the course of their releases. Obviously not everyone has had their high armor yet and obviously higher grade armor realizations are even further down the line so don't stress too much about them but be aware of them is basically what I was trying to get across throughout the entirety of this video. Don't forget to like the video, share the video out to anyone who plays the City or Opera Omnia, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and consider perhaps becoming a patron as well if you'd like to get extra benefits including title cards, voice chats with me, and shout outs for any would you pull videos and things like that, so you can guys can be more involved with the channel as best you want. And obviously, don't forget to click on that bell for notifications on any future Dissidia videos I might be making. And then the next video is going to be the Should You Pull video for 8's Lost Chapter, so let me know in the comments below on both whether you're planning on pulling for 8, and also whose high armor you want to grab first, and like what your plan is for exchanging your high armor tokens. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care!